Hello and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage. We got the 72 Norton Commando Combat on the lift right now. We're going to work on uh, a worn bushing here on the shifter uh, piece here. Um, it's leaking a little bit, but yet the, it's worn. So it's, you can see it move. Yeah, you can see it kind of moving there. Um, we're going to work on replacing this. Yeah, see how much that moves? It's not supposed to do that. And we're hoping that the, the shaft's not worn as well, so we're going to find out when we dig into it. But anyway, let's get started here. First off, we're going to start draining the fluid, and then we'll work on taking all the linkage and stuff off. We have all the okay. tools we think we need right now out, including a new bushing from Andover Norton here. It was a yeah, nice bronze, brass bronze bushing. And it's a 040063 that gets replaced here. And we got another we got another gasket to put in, and that's sitting somewhere else. But first off, we're gonna drain the oil out of the transmission. Okay, so this is the bolt we need to remove to be able to drain the transmission. That's where it's located at. It's one of them uh, common dumb head uh, bolts you see on a lot of British bikes. And There we go. There we got it snug, I guess. Or, it was snug. Anyways. Alright, we're going to work on draining this out. Alright. We removed the fill cap here to, to let air get in there so it drains a little bit easier. Plus, we're going to unconnect, disconnect some stuff here. Go. Sometimes they don't come off. It looks like it was gonna. But yeah, well. Looks like it's not gonna. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you gotta wedge it. Yeah, wedging it, we'd have to like open it up here a little bit just to get the pressure off of it. We got the kicker, kicker arm off, and we're gonna just connect this linkage up here, and this should all just kind of like fall out of the way. Hopefully, I think. I believe that's how it works. That's how I put it together, I believe. Oops. Yeah. This is the for the indexer. Oh, the indexer for the it pointer, but we can't use it because this is up in the air. Oh, there's that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so this doesn't have the indexer on it because of this uh, this linkage here and the indexer here. There's a provision on the uh, cover there that says one, two, three, four on it, indicating what gear you go into. There we go. Now we should really get the cover off. We took all the, we loosened all the screws up anyway. There's five of them, and the shaft here. I don't know if you can see that, but it wheels back and forth pretty much a lot. Seems like so. 
We're going to take this apart and see what this bushing looks like. I'm getting the rest of them out here. Disconnecting the clutch cable right now. back there like that. There we are. Got our move. Just to verify if this bushing is good or not, we're going to put this back in here and wiggle it around. Check the we could we could check the bushing on this one, but we already knew it was war. Just the way it wiggled around. Yeah, see that. So we gotta take this all off. Dog leg always goes to the bottom. There's a dog leg on one that goes to the down by the kicker hole or to the bottom of the transmission. It's very important. There's also an o-ring on this shaft here. We're going to be replacing that. Yeah, yeah but to get to that bush, we're going to have to take all that stuff out. Uh, Pretty much. Maybe. There's a spring under here. We're going to derail it. Here's the shaft. Now you can look at that and wipe it off. Okay. There's a washer. So it's kind of looking at this gear selector here. Um, it's kind of got some stuff going on here, but you really can't feel none of that on the surface here. And it's pretty good shape. I got the got the new bushing here. We tried on it. And it doesn't really move around much. It moves around for the free play you're supposed to have, but doesn't really have any, what I, what I call it, wiggle? <laughs> it doesn't have any wiggle right now. So. And by the time you press this into here, this will get tighter. Because there'll be squeeze on it when That's you true. press it yeah. in. So they make these looser so for that reason. And this one is out of that other cover. And you put it in there and it barely moves. I mean, yeah. it moves with nice, but it barely moves. This is an extra cover we had laying around from a different transmission in the Mark III video, I think we had and this from. We could use this cover, except this cover, somebody has machined this out to put a seal in here. Which would probably be pretty good. Which would be pretty neat, <laughs> except the only problem is, I don't know what seal they did this for. See, this disc cover and a whole bunch of transmission parts I I just bought for spare parts and uh, and it just happened to be in it and I just noticed that this is this is uh, machined out because when you look at this one see it's different this one takes the an o-ring which we already put an x-ring in it and we put this takes an o-ring and I put an x-ring in there and x-ring stops the oil leaking really well and even though this was really war, it didn't really leak yet. But it, it's war, so we're going to replace it now that we got some downtime. Working on pulling this 
out. Oh, there it goes. Got it. All right. Get ready to put the new one in. Here we are. We're getting ready to install the new bushing here. Got the bushing installed, and then we're just going to check the spline gear selector here. And wow, <laughs> it's it's not tight. It's it doesn't have that movement anymore. No, nope, it doesn't. It just it moves real easy, but it don't have. It's just has minimal play. So we're going to be good here. We're going <coughs> to work on getting the new X ring put in there, and. Everywhere else. Get a different uh, X ring put back in there, a new one. They got kind of twisted. We got a new X ring in here now, and we got that one straightened out. Uh, it was kind of like messed up, but we got it fixed. And I guess now all we got to do is just pretty much assemble this now. And we probably should oil this. Um, All right, I'll get the oil. There we go. He's got lubed it with some transmission oil. I got to get this spring down in here. There it goes. What's that? Where? Which one is the bottom? There's one? a spring yep. here. And here and it fits in that in that hook see down there yeah so they that's what keeps it centered dog leg to the bottom what do you mean by dog leg you mean the, the curve and the screw and the, um, <laughs> the curve leg. and the spring one arm is straight one arm has what they call a dog leg right so the dog leg bottom of the transmission. Oh, wait a minute. We gotta, we gotta back up. I had the washer laying over there. We gotta put a washer down underneath here first. Oh, yep. Yeah. So, we gotta unhook it. Get that back out of there. Should have a new a new washer, but I don't have one. There it is. <coughs> okay, now back to the spring. Dog leg dial. Try not to spread it any more than you have to. Now, before we go any further, we got to change the X ring in this. So there's the new X ring for the that um, in selector shaft. 400-010. So you said it's 400-010, and the medium size one that goes to the right above the bushing. Don't you say that one was? That one was this one. That one is a 400-113. 400-113. And then our large one. Our large one is a 400-214. Yeah, 400-214. So, just thought I mentioned all them. It's putting the, the new X-ring on that selector shaft now. Yeah. Trying to. Done. <laughs> Trying to, I guess. Gotta make sure it doesn't have a twist in it.
Now it's the time to get the twists out if it is. Because you got to roll it on. It looks like it's all okay. So now we're going to just slide it down, snap it into place. There it is. There we go. this way. And when you have this perfectly centered, there's got to be approximately ten thousandths of play between the spring and and the pawl. This is called a pawl. So that when this when the lever is moved, it turns right away, see? there like that it's got to turn right away as soon as you start to turn it but it also has to remain in the neutral position at all times like that if one leg is bent wrong it it will it will be cocked over and it and it won't shift right so this is that's very very important <clears throat> Yeah, now we're just going to reverse. Now we got to put the hook the cable up and then put our gasket on. Can't forget that. And then, right. <laughs> and then uh, slide it all together. Okay. Put the spring in there. We'll probably use uh, 510 on this, probably, right? You can. Well, or lots of times I just put them together dry. In this case, oil even is okay. Oh, we're going to use the same this gasket? this gasket isn't tore, so it's up to you. We can either put a new gasket in it. It wasn't leaking. It's not tore. It's not actually sure. in really nice condition yet. But if I pull this off, I'm up to make it. It's up to you. Some yeah, people they, might criticize this, but <clears throat> I have no problem with it at all. Yeah, we'll just reuse it then. There's, there's two studs right there. Okay. Make sure you line up the spring in the middle here. everything right until I dropped it. It doesn't hurt to have a nice and oily. Yeah, it's kind of oil coated. <laughs> Messing with us. There it goes. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Now was, we gotta hook that up. It was the paw wasn't messing with us. 
Install the top screw there. So it stays in place. Yeah. It stops trying to come apart. Now we're going to try and get this. I need to slide over. Doing this on the side of the road someday. Yeah. No way. <laughs> I think I'd be trailing that back. <laughs> I had to work on that on the side of the road. That'd be a pain in the butt. Yeah. I suppose you've done that before. Yeah. There. Something to it. <laughs> now the other All side right. can be hooked up. I'll work on hooking the How do you got left? Clutch up here. Put up all the parts. Rehook the rehook the cable back up in there and then into that groove right there and then adjust it until I have kind of the right free play. Oh, I got a ways to go yet. Between a sixteenth and the eighth. Book calls for eight, but sometimes you have to tighten it up a little bit if, if you have clutch drag. All right, I think I have the the free play there. I can always adjust it from there, but all right. Working on uh, tightening up the rest of the screws here. This is a slotted like cheese head type screw, and we just pretty much have to hand tighten it. You want it tight, but not too tight. I mean, you're going into aluminum case. You can only get it so tight with so big a screwdriver. So if you don't get too big a screwdriver, one that fits it good. So you don't want to gnarl up your yeah, and one with a wrench thing where you <laughs> you don't need to you don't you don't need to do that. Yeah, Just get exactly. it good and tight, and it'll be fine. That's how it was. All right, nice. Now we got to put the drain plug back in. Yeah, we'll work under that. Let me uncut this that. and it'll get them all back up. Oil, so here's the oil that came out. It actually looks pretty good for having uh, pretty close to 2,000 miles on it since this happened. This leak or this bushing getting worn. I don't see a lot of glitter. We're Gonna put new uh, new green zinc oil in here, and we're getting ready to fill it up. There is a there is a fill plug here. You actually open this up, and you put oil in through here until it starts to leak out. Then you close this up. But if you fill it up, and you actually see the you can actually see that uh, hole right there. So. If you're watching while you fill up, you can pretty much fill it up to that hole and you wouldn't have to worry about backing that out. That's what we do. That's what we do anyway. So I just bring it up to touch the bottom of the hole. And what we use is GL4. This is Brad Penn multi-purpose SAW8090 gear oil GL4. Do not use GL5. GL5 eats brass and there's lots of brass inside of a Norton transmission. This oil is green by the way, but I don't 
it works really good. It takes a while to drain down. I didn't put that much in it. Now we got to wait for it to run through the main bearings to go into the other side. It's going down quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. How much does it take? Usually it's just pretty much a quart or what? No, it takes about, I was going to look it up, but since it has a fill hole, I don't worry about it. I just fill it. No, that's true. Yeah. I mean, we could go, like you said, we could go with procedure, but like we're going to do, we're going to keep putting in until it doesn't drain down no more, and then until it touches that fill hole down there. It's actually receded quite a bit. You probably put more the in it. fill hole is just starting to show. No, I'm going to wait till it's below the fill hole. the hall. See, if you take the bolt out while you're trying to fill it, you're always going to have it running out. <laughs> I can believe that, yeah. It just goes right to that hole. And... Well, we got half the hole open now. Like I say, it takes a while for it to you can speed it up by getting the kicker on here and pulling the clutch in and spinning the gears around and I can see that the oil is just below the hole there, and uh, we'll have to just add a little bit more. That takes like, why do you say, 5.5 5. 5 ounces. Yeah. And this, this had, yeah, I probably put about that much in it, so I'm just going to give it a little more taste. And we'll let that drain a little bit. There we go, it should be pretty good. There we are, we got the, the cover on. Make sure that this breather hole is at the top, not down here. Got it and wiped? Yeah, we got it all cleaned up. We're ready to put the linkage back on and the kicker arm. Got the kicker arm back on here and he's tightening down the bolt now. Yeah, we got What's We up? didn't have this on. We didn't have to have this on first, did we? Kind of hope. Yeah, but we can we can move this out of the way and Oh this. Well, yeah, that's gotta go over. Oh we'll kick it down. Yeah, okay. we'll kick it down. It should be fine. We should have done that. Put that on first. Yeah. But on this setup anyway. Yeah, and unfortunately I gotta move the peg out of the way to give, be able to kick this. Can't get to put it back <laughs> when I go to take off either. Gonna have to take that. Off, I guess. 
it's not a big deal. Nope. It's not like we're losing adjustments or anything. Nope. We should have put this up first, but then the kicker, I guess. Yeah, I think that's in the right spot, right? Well, I don't know. Well, when you put your... Uh, yeah, we know we got to hook this up first. We can always adjust that. We can that change first. that. When you put this out and you put your foot on there, you'll either know it's either this needs to go higher or lower. Yeah. Or it's where it is. And we'll adjust that accordingly. Anyway, that's pretty much how it goes together, so... It's nice having that fixed. I'm probably going to... Take this out for uh, an all-day ride one of these days coming up. So, let's see how that goes. It's kind of like one of my favorite bikes to ride. So, you're gonna have to sit on it. Yeah, let's check it out. Well, there we got it all fixed up and. We're gonna come to an end on this video. Hope you enjoyed everything. I guess it's ready to go out for a ride. So, like I said a little bit ago, I was gonna work on going for a ride here one of these next days. Pretty much spend all day on it. <laughs> so, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, everything seems to, we got this reset. We actually uh, put the bolt in a different way this time. So I, when we go to take it apart ever again, it, we don't have to, had the problem like we did in the beginning of this video so anyway there it is so anyway see you again soon and hope you enjoyed everything